We actually come from a group uh, that um, was reading Michelle Alexander, a book study group. Uh, since we've been meeting since January uh, 3rd, and so the whole month of January, we met once a week and, and talked about the book itself. And so one of the professors uh, here at the university, she uh, organized that book study, and then she invited us to the story circle, which that was, and we all told different stories, even related to uh, social economic injustices. Um, so that's basically what that was. This is a storytelling group. We collect stories about social justice and the uh, um, civil rights movement. And so we wanted to come to before Michelle Alexander talk and discuss stories about loss of freedom. Well, the piece that I talked about was a time when I was working construction and there was a, I was at a house with an older Caucasian man and an older Caucasian woman. And the woman came out and said, you know, I don't mind colored folks. And the concept of my mind went back like, I'm not familiar with that generation or that time, so I know, know nothing about being colored. So it changed my viewpoint of how people see you and how the generation's mindset is of thinking colored, not African-American, and we haven't passed that stage. I pretty much told a story about how my best friend next door to me was Arabic and how when 9-11 rolled around, a whole bunch of obscene things were written all over their house. So they decided the right time was to move. So they moved to a different place and I got real sad. So as a result, I decided to learn Arabic. I don't know why, but it's opened many doors and eyeballs. My particular story uh, was talking about the criminal justice system being needed, needing to be reformed because I have a, have a particular cousin that was arrested 52 times last year and he was in the Summit County Jail. So obviously he has a drug problem. He's not really a criminal. So it's like something's wrong there. Something's missing. Mm -hmm. How can you arrest the same person 52 times and put him in a county and not really get them the proper help that he, that he needs? I came from a very racist past, and through interaction with certain friends, I learned to learn different languages and not offend people and not be offended myself. Well, I think having the dialogue, talking, we have to have these conversations because people don't know what's happening in different communities. People don't know the injustice that's happening or the economic indifferences that's going on in the city. So I think just having this conversation alone is sparking so much attention. And then uh, by us going over to uh, see Michelle Alexander, I think that will spark a whole new movement. So I brought people from Cascade Village, which is the place I'm doing my sabbatical. Um, I'm doing a sabbatical year there. On, it's called Cascade Village Public Art. And we did a reading group that read Michelle Alexander's The New Jim Crow. And so my group came down tonight to see Michelle Alexander. And before her talk, we came to the story circles. Well, as with many people, what people, what people in authority tell them, like the younger generation always tends to do the opposite as like a rebellion or, you know, just to try out what the other side has to offer. Just to try out what other viewpoints actually feel like. I think it's going to help make this presentation more personal to them because the stories were told from their personal history. So now they'll go into Michelle Alexander having thought about this from their own point of view. 